Hey, Pokédad fan club, it's me, Pokédad, and uh, Fates Collide is coming out very soon. You may have already seen some pre-release data. Um, I felt like it was about time that I started doing my set review, talking about some of the major cards in here. Um, I'm probably not going to go through them as thoroughly as I usually do. I'm going to just try to hit the main ones that I think might see some um, above average casual play or competitive play. So let's just get right into this. As always, we start off with the grass types. And uh, the first one we have here is Shuckle. And, you know, this is one that most people would say, why are you even bothering uh, looking at this one? But I actually could see how this could possibly be used um, for one of the cards. One of the things that is, has come back to this set is... Um, restored Pokemon, ones that you have to use some kind of fossil to get it out. And most of those fossils will allow you to like look at the bottom four or seven cards. I, I don't, when we get to them, we'll go over that more, but you look at the bottom so many cards and then you can take the restored fossil and put it on your bench. That's the only way you can get it on, like Ammonite and Aerodactyl and some of these other ones. It's the only way is if you can use it through, uh, a fossil. Um, now we do have Fossil Researcher and Furious Fist, so um, it is possible that these could be used without needing um, the Aerodactyl fossil and all this other stuff. But once, but once Fossil Researcher rotates, um, there won't be a good way to get it out except through the uh, fossils. So uh, let's just go ahead and look at this uh, guy. His second attack is the one I want to look at. It is 30, I'm sorry, his first attack is what I want to look at. Hide berries for a colorless. He is a grass type. Draw two cards and then put one card from your hand onto the bottom of your deck. This guy I see could be, uh, you know, maybe a three of, maybe even a four of in a deck uh, as your main starter. Just so that if you're trying to get uh, restored Pokemon out, you can put them on the bottom of your deck and then search for them with your... Uh, your fossils and stuff like that. So Shuckle could see some play uh, if any of the fossil decks become competitive. Uh, so I just want to throw him out. That's all I really want to say about him. Uh, we can go into Burmy and Wormadam and Motham. Uh, nothing really special. All right, let's go into um, this Snivy Servine Superior line. One thing about grass that I've noticed is that because of the Forest of Giant plants, um, it's real easy to evolve, but it's not so easy to attack because most of grass types have like a ton of um, energy requirements. Think of like Chestnut Break, how um, you know you could use the Forest to potentially get one out on turn one, but you're still looking at like two or three turns before you're even going to get it charged up. So it's like, what's the point? This is one of those few cards, the one this stage two, that can take advantage of Forest of Giant Plants and still be somewhat competitive. Matter of fact, I've seen a lot of competitive players already trading for this card. So this is one that you, at pre-releases. So this is one you may want to take a look at. Now, obviously, we're not going to spend too much on Snivy. Servine is the stage one to 70 HP, uh, but and I don't the attack really doesn't matter. But the ability is what I want you to get. From this, you may use this ability when you, once when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon. Flip a coin if heads your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. So think about this: you can go ahead and paralyze your opponent potentially, and on on your way to getting him to superior on one turn uh, with the Forest of Giant Plants. So this is potentially a really really Good card. Um, all right. Throw in now. Let's look at Superior. Superior is the stage two. It's 140 HP, so it doubles its HP from 70 to 140 as you get it into this. Uh, it's got two attacks. One's a colorless, and then one is a grass type. So you only need one grass to get this guy going. This might be a good toad counter. In fact. Um, uh, not that you necessarily want to use a stage two, but the fact that you only need one grass to be able to do it. Coil does 40 damage. During your next turn, the damage from this Pokemon's attack 
attacks do 60 more damage okay so if you use coil for this turn you're only going to hit for 40 but the next turn your attack will be 60 more so uh, slash down is a gra one grass does 80 damage and then this Pokemon can't use slash down during the next turn so on turn one you hit for 40 and then the next turn you hit for 180 with the 60 damage so uh, not not 180 140 so 40 and 140 gives you 180 so uh, you can basically two hit KO just about any EX um, right now so this superior deck I do see as a potential uh, good card um, grass has needed some more uh, inexpensive attackers uh, that can take advantage of forest right now Vespaquin and Vileplume are really the only major ones and then you can throw I guess you could say Mega Sceptile and Sceptile EX are pretty solid but uh, this is gonna give grass another weapon to work with alright we'll take a look briefly at Moltres I don't want to spend a lot of time here it's 120 HP uh, has combustion for 20 and then flare bird does 80 damage you can choose to do an additional 40 uh, if you do this Pokemon does 20 damage to itself one thing you should note is with the blacksmith engine you could get this um, charged up in one turn but I still think Entei um, with the Theta doubles a better choice than this is so that's what I would go with however I do believe that uh, down the road we're going to get a box set that will have a Moltres break and I think it's going to actually have a 5 energy attachment it's like 160 HP and then it hits for like 160 damage um, again I, I don't think it's going to be playable competitively um, it might be playable just for fun um, I'm sure some people will give it a try but I just don't think uh, I mean we've already seen 5 energy attackers like Mega Charizard and Mega Rayquaza Dragon hitting for 300 and I think it would be much better to hit for 300 than just 160 if I'm going to try to get 5 energies on something so I don't know I don't think it'll see play alright the next big one is the Delphox break line alright we've got Finnegan two Finnegans uh, Brakeson um, Braxen, Braxen, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Delphox and then Delphox Break. Um, let's look at the Finnekins because um, one's Tell Whip, flip a coin if heads your opponent's active Pokemon can't attack during your opponent's next turn for double colorless. See, Froki does, has a potential to paralyze. This is only going to just keep your opponent from attacking and with so many ways to retreat nowadays, switching, Zorark, so on and so forth. Um, Tail Whip isn't going to really do much. Uh, also, if you'll see in the corner right here, um, I'm on Pokey Beach, and they did just announce that we there is possibly going to be a, a Professor Sycamore Full Art in the next set. Um, so you pr if you're looking at that, I'll go ahead and show you that is going to be coming out. Um, the other Finnegan invite out, flip a coin if head switch your opponent's active Pokemon with one of her bench, his or her bench. Both of these attacks I think are designed to try to give you a chance to evolve before they just donk you, but they're not really good. Like I said, Froakie is much better. Greninja Break is much better, um, I think, personally. Alright, Braxton, Destructive Fire does 20 damage and flip a coin if heads discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. That could be useful, attractive Rimmin, 30 damage. But again, you're only at 80 HP, so you only jump uh, just 30 HP there. When you get to the stage 2, you jump from 80 to 140, so you're jumping another 60. And you'll probably see the Delphox from XY base set used more because it has, I think, Mysterious Fire or something like that, which allows you to draw your hand up to 6. And then the attack is kind of like a Keldeo or um, Raikou, uh, where if you, it takes three colorless energy, but if for every fire that's, and it does 50 damage, and then for every fire it does an additional 20, so you can load it up with fire and potentially hit for an awful lot of damage if you want to. This Delphox, however, we'll take a look at. Flickering Flame does 40 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep, so it could give you maybe a 
turn or two to stall while they're asleep. Psycho Storm does 20 times damage. This attack does 20 times da the number of energy times the number of energy attached to all Pokemon, both yours and your opponents. So if they're playing a really heavy, thick um, deck where it requires a lot of energy, like maybe a Mega Gardevoir deck or the new Darkrai, um, this could potentially be good because it would do 20 times the number of energy both on their side of the field and on your side. Um, and I will say one thing about um, Fire is that they can get a lot of energy in play pretty quickly uh, with Blacksmith. Um, I mean, you could literally have this charged up in one turn, so you could be hitting for 60 just on your side, not including what's on the other side. And then you throw in maybe something like Team uh, Magma's Camera Up, uh, adding an energy or... Um, you know, just a couple, two turns of Blacksmith, and you could be having easily six or seven or even eight energy on the field. So that could be potentially uh, a big attack. Now, Delphox Break kind of synergizes with this attack, okay? Delphox Break has an ability, uh, Flare Watch. Um, once during your turn, before you attack, you may search your deck for a fire energy and attach it to one of your Pokemon. So if you could get a couple of these out, you could be literally having, um, adding two energy straight from your deck onto the field every turn. Uh, that's pretty cool. However, it is a stage three. Now the good side, the good thing about it is it is 180 HP. So if there's a way we could stall like wall, maybe Waylord or maybe Robo Subs or something like that, if we could stall to get so that we're able to get these out, then I think it could be useful. Um, I do think Wally has become a much more important card, uh, so I do see uh, Wally being very useful in this deck, especially if you could rare candy into the Del Fox, say turn two. And then Wally into the break on on that same turn, uh, you you know by turn two you could have Blacksmith twice, attach two energies, and then use this uh, ability. You could literally on turn two have uh, potentially seven energies in play, and Delphox would be hitting for 140. Um, having said that, on on paper it sounds good, but actually making it work in the real world when you're playing that's a different story all right moving right along um, had to take a short break uh, so you may have noticed a little bit of choppiness right there after Delphox break uh, let's see Dugong really doesn't freezing breath does 20 damage if heads your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed if tails your opponent's actual Pokemon is now asleep. Uh, it's kind of cool, but I just don't think it's worth it for stage one. All right, we talked about the restored Pokemon, and we're now going to look at our first one. Um, and this might be one of the best ones, though I still think it's going to be a little difficult to, to pull off. All right, so Ammonite is the restored Pokemon. This is the one you have to use the fossil researcher or fossils to get out and put on your bench and it can only be done with helix fossil to get almanite out and then he evolves from almanite to almastar which is a stage one now almastar is pretty cool so if you can get almanite out and get almastar going you can use this ability restore uh, restoration beam once during your turn before you attack you may search your deck for a restored pokemon and put it straight onto your bench and then shuffle your deck afterward. So Aerodactyl, for instance, I've seen a combo where you use uh, Amastar and Aerodactyl to kind of pick off Shamans. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that more when we get to uh, Aerodactyl. I think Kabutops is in here also. And there may be one other. We'll, when we get to him, we'll talk about him. As far as his attack, though, Spinning Attack for Water and a Colorless, 60 damage. It's decent for just two colors, but I don't think he'll be your attacker much. He's mostly going to be used for his ability. And then uh, Amastar has a break called Amastar Break, and it adds another ability. Once during your turn before you attack, 
You may choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon EXs and switch it with his or her active. And so this is where kind of like the Aerodactyl combo comes in because then you can use the break to bring up Shamans from the bench. Uh, put them in the active and then take KOs on them. Uh, very, very doable. Very um, good. If you're playing against a non-EX deck though, um, Almostar really doesn't help you all that much. Almostar break. I should say. Alright, Glaceon EX is definitely one we need to talk about because this one is going to see competitive play, I believe. Um, you can see it in a couple decks. One of the decks I envision is Mega Manetric Jolteon Glaceon. Rough Seas synergizes well with water and lightning anyway, and, and a lot of Mega Manetric decks play water in them anyway, so you could you see Glaceon being played in a Mega Manetric deck. Now, um, and the cool thing I like about this Glaceon is the attacks kind of synergize together really well. Let's actually look at the second one first, though. All right, so Crystal Ray for a water and a double colorless does 70 damage during your opponent's next turn. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by evolved Pokemon. So decks like Greninja Break could really struggle just because of Glaceon EX. Uh, they'd still be able to use the Water Shurikens, but they would not be able to hit for damage. Um, Glaceon prevents evolved Pokemon from hurting it. Jolteon prevents basic Pokemon from hurting it. So here's the thing. you Are you running against a basic deck? Then you play Jolteon. If you're running against an evolved deck, you play Glaceon. And it's you know, quite cool, uh, very useful. The only bad thing about Glaceon is it is a two retreat where Jolteon is just a one, uh, zero free retreat, but it does have 10 more HP. And so I could see them both being played in a me Mega Manetric deck. Uh, the second attack is Second Bite, does 20 damage, and this attack does 10 more damage for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. So if you can hit the 70. Um, damage then uh, let's actually think of it this way if you put a muscle band on or a fighting fury belt you'll do 80 damage with a fighting fury belt and then second bite can come back the next turn and do um, 100 damage so you'd hit for 180 so even if it was playing against say for instance a um, basic EX deck it could still knock out an EX if they didn't have, say, a Fighting Fury belt on. Um, so it could still be use, useful even if an Evolved Pokemon, they don't have Evolved Pokemon, could still be useful uh, to put damage, knock out, two hit KO an, an EX. So I think that's worth noting. White Curum, I do know it's a promo in pre-release, but I don't think it's really worth talking about. Uh, Binnacle and Barbarical. Um, I think Babarical we got to really consider not for his attack but for his ability hand block here. You can use this ability if you have a stadium card in play. As long as this Pokemon is in play, your opponent can't attach any special energy cards from his or her hand. Some people are saying this is going to be kind of like the Night March. Um, going to stop Night March. I'm not sure. I mean, you can pretty much use Giratina to stop Night March from attaching double colorless. Uh, this thing, the only thing is, is once they change their stadium, then they're going to be able to use it once again. So if you can somehow not win the stadium more and get this locked in, then I guess it is possible that they would never be able to attach any more special energy. So it could be used against Night March. But... Night March flies through their deck so much, and with Puzzles of Time, they're probably going to be able to find a Dimension Valley pretty easily. Um, the other one that it might be helpful against is uh, Vespaquin Vileplume. Uh, sometimes those guys, in a, even me, as I've played it, and you discard all your forests because you're trying to draw into something else, and then this right here could stop uh, them in their tracks. So, you know, I think it's a playable card. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I do feel like we need to talk about Rotom here. It's uh, just 70 HP Lightning type, but I do think that this would be a, is going to be a good 
Trevenant Break Counter. Um, and I think there's a couple in this deck that we need to talk about. Uh, but uh, Plasma Magic, uh, move two damage counters from each of your Pokemon with damage counters on them to your opponent's active Pokemon. So if he Silent Fears and you have this uh, in the active, you put a double colorless on, you're going to basically put, and let's say you have five on the bench, so you have um, five, everything has three damage counters on it, and then you use this attack, it's going to put 100 back, uh, 120 back onto Trevenant Break. Um, and that could really be devastating because now it's going to, now there's only one damage counter on each of your Pokemon. It's going to take him a long time and he's going to get knocked out. He will, I imagine he would have to tree slam the Rotom and after one turn of Silent Fear and then a tree slam, that would be it. But it could be pretty good, at least for one turn, just to help out for one turn. That's the only lightning type in this whole deck. All right, so the next one is Alakazam and Mega Alakazam. And I've already done, uh, through the help of my friend Caleb Rice, we already did uh, one deck uh, build of Mega Alakazam. But we will, I'm actually going to look at a different one, uh, one that's going to be a little more my own. That won't be, that won't be released for a little ways down the, the road. But let's just look, refresh our memory on them. So Alakazam has uh, an attack suppression for a psychic and a colorless. Um, it does three damage counters on every one of your opponent's Pokemon that has energy attached. So that can begin to soften them up for what Mega Alakazam does. Um, he also has an ability, and this is weird because it's when this Pokemon evolves into Mega Alakazam, you may place two damage counters on your act on your opponent's active Pokemon and three damage counters on one of your opponent's bench. And when you read it in the actual English, it's actually really dear weird. When this Pokemon is about to evolve, before you evolve, do this. And it's kind of ambiguous, but I think the ruling is going to be they'll have a ruling out on it. So. Um, that ability is going to be useful because then you're going to go ahead and get damage counters uh, on the field, which kind of sets you up for Mega Alakazam. Remember, he's also for just a, a psychic and a colorless with dimension value, it would just be one psychic. Um, does 10 damage plus 30 more damage for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. So this is kind of like Wobbuffet, except that instead of 10 damage plus 10 for each damage counter it does 30 damage so just to put things in perspective uh, 170 HP uh, EX if it has four damage counters on it uh, would then hit for 120 plus 10 would be 130 so 130 plus the four that's on it would knock it out so with five damage counters you could knock out something that's 210 HP and with six damage counters on something you're pretty much knocking out everything except a Waylord with a Fighting Fury Belt. So the idea is to get four to five damage counters on every single Pokemon, or just really three EXs and then game over. That's pretty much it. However, the only thing I see drawn back to this deck, and some people think it's going to be just fine, but I don't, is I think Night March is still going to destroy it. Um, a, a good Night March build will be able to take three prize, three. EX six prizes from EXs before they'll be able to take six off of um, the Night Marchers. And we'll talk about Mew in just a minute that Night March is going to get to make them even stronger. And so for that reason, I don't think Mega Alakazam is going to do as well, just like Mega Mewtwo won't do as well until Night March rotates, if it rotates. All right, we got coughing and wheezing. Um, this is, I just want to briefly talk about this. I see that this could be potentially, this wheezing could be potentially a, a mill deck, a balloon bomb, flip two coins for each heads, discard the top two cards of your opponent's deck. There's actually a trainer card where we'll talk about that does the exact same thing uh, when we get to the trainer cards. Um, so I can see someone using wheezing and that card and just trying to mill their opponent by flipping coins and hoping they hit a lot of heads. 
Um, I mean, theoretically, for every attack, you could potentially get four mill four cards. Um, and if you could somehow run this without any EXs, just reuse the wheezings, um, you could potentially, you know, get a good five or six shots at trying to mill them for four and then throw in the, the supporter card that we'll look out later. And uh, I don't know, you might have a mill deck. All right, we talk. I just talked about Alakazam against um, Night March. This card, I think, is going to make Night March even stronger. We used to have Mew EX. It was 120 HP. It was used in expanded. Uh, it is used in expanded Night March decks right now. At the time, it was used in uh, standard when before Mew EX rotated. Uh, but this is very similar to that, except it's a smaller HP, but the good thing is it has free retreat. It only has 50 HP, uh, but it can still use a uh, Fighting Fury Belt to bump that up to 90, give you an extra 10 damage. Um, its ability is similar to Mew EX's, except it does have a couple caveats. Uh, this Pokemon can use the attacks of each of your basic Pokemon. So Mew EX could use the attack of anybody's Pokemon as long as they have the right energy. This one needs the necessary energy. And you can only use the attacks on your side and only of your benched Pokemon. So Night March, since they're all basics except for Lampet, which never gets played actually on the field, um, you can copy Pumpkaboo and Joltik's attack. With Dimension Valley, you can actually use Joltik's attack for just a single energy. So uh, it's very possible that you could just stream Muse for your attackers and put 10 or 11 Night Marchers in the discard pile and just finish your opponent off that way. Um, so anyway, yeah, and uh, it is Psychic Week, but, it, but Alakazam is Psychic Week, so I see Mew taking out Alakazam a lot. Um, and that's one, again, one problem I see with Alakazam just in general. Uh, Spoink and Grumpig, um, I've just, I, I want to just bring this up. I don't think it's going to see play. I don't think it's competitive. But Headwalking, choose a basic Pokemon in your opponent's discard pile, put it onto their bench, and then place three damage counters on it. You could literally pull a Joltik out of your opponent's uh, discard pile, put it on their bench, and then put three damage counters and knock it out. Um, it's not going to be very good though because you're trading a basic for a stage one um, and they're going to knock out your stage one so it's going to be harder to stream this than it is to stream Night Marchers but I just think it would be kind of cool to use Grumpig to knock out a Joltik in the discard pile Gothita looks like it just gets its basic so it doesn't get Gotharita or Gothitelle uh, Solosis, Duosion, and Unicyclus um, I guess I'll just briefly talk about this. It's it's a deck I'll probably build just for casual fun, but I don't think it's going to be super competitive. One thing you should know, though, is that the more of these you have on your bench, the more the damage does. So with Solosis, it's for a Psychic and a Colorless with Dimension Value would be just a Psychic. If another Solosis is on your bench, then it does an additional 30 damage. So it would be 10 plus 30 is 40. All right, if Duosion's in the active, again, Psychic Colorless, so for Dimension Valley, just a Psychic. If there's a Solosis on your bench, this attack does 30 more damage. If there's a Duosion on your bench, this attack does 60 more damage. So this guy, for one color, for one energy, would hit for 100. And then if you could get somehow a Reuniclus in the active, and another Reuniclus on the bench, and a Solosis on the bench, and a... Um, Duosion on the bench, you would hit for 30 plus 60 plus 90, which is 180 plus 10 would be 190, uh, plus uh, so 190 for one psychic energy with a dimension valley. I think it's going to be you're going to have to really put a lot of resources. You're going to have to probably use a lot of buddy buddy rescues, probably use uh, revives. Uh, and one thing to remember is even though he's a stage 2, he's only got 90 HP, so they're uh, very fragile. I don't want to spend a whole lot more time on that. Diglett uh, doesn't, I guess we don't get a Doug Trio, just a Diglett here. Marowak, this is definitely one we need to talk about because this card is going to be 
seen a lot. It's going to hurt Toad and Giratina quite a bit. Um, it might even keep Giratina Seismitoad from being a deck um, in the future. Basically, for the ability, uh, you and your hand are not affected by the effects of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks. Remove any existing effects on you and your hand. So a Quaking Punch, it doesn't affect the opponent. Your like if some if you get Quaking Punch by Seismitoad, it doesn't affect your Pokemon. It affects your hand and you as the player. The item lock being item locked affects your hand. By having Marowak in play, it would be like when they go to Quaking Punch you, they just do the 30 damage plus whatever damage enhancers. But you don't get item locked. So this is going to be another card that I think Night March is actually going to take advantage of because Night March, one of Night March's hardest battles is against Giratina Seismitoad. So um, I see this could be a Maxi's Hidden Ball trick um, in the making for Night March. I also want to look at his attack. It's boomerang 60 times damage, flip two coins, it does 60 times the number of heads. Um, I potentially could see this being used also in a Marowak break deck. Uh, maybe just a one of or a two two line or something like that. But I think this could potentially make Marowak break and fighting in general become a little more um, playable. I don't know, time will tell. I do know it's going to see play though, regardless. All right, Kabuto um, is another restored type and it needs Dome Fossil to be gotten into play. It's 80 HP and it has one little attack of 30. Um, it does evolve into Kabutops, which is a massive 150 HP stage one, which is pretty cool. Double Colorless does 50 damage. Healed from this Pokemon the same amount of damage this attack does to your opponent's active Pokemon. I could actually see this potentially, maybe, possibly being used in Maxis, except that Gallade is so much better. Um, if Gallade wasn't in play, though, the double colorless would be useful, and you could just Maxis this in, which you might be able to. You could even see this. Excuse me, getting a little late. Um, you could even see this potentially. Um, in a fighting deck and use just to maxis the card in. Second attack, X Scissors does 80 damage. Flip a coin if heads this attack does an additional 60. I just don't think it's really all that good. I mean, between Garchomp and Glade, uh, if you wanted to do a lot of damage with something, you would use Garchomp. And if you wanted to hit with just a double colorless, Glade makes a lot uh, more sense. So I just hate to say it, but Kabutops you're probably going to go um, in the binder and stay there. All right, Larvitar. Um, if I can get this thing to scroll for me. There we go. Uh, I think. All right, Larvitar. Um, oh, we missed it. Wow. Okay, let's go back up for a second, guys. Actually, I'm just going to pause the video for just a second. All right, uh, Larvitar and Pupitar eventually uh, evolve into Tyranitar. So we'll look at his card when we get down into the dark, but they start as fighting types. So uh, the next one to look at is Regirock here. Uh, Regirock EX. Um, the attack isn't all that useful. Bedrock Press does 100 damage, and during your opponent's next turn, any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks is reduced by 20. The big reason we're going to use Regirock in fighting decks is that he has the ability Reggie Power. Each of your fighting Pokemon does 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon, excluding Regirock. This is going to be used in Zygarde EX and even possibly Lucario EX um, just to ramp the damage. Uh, now with Fighting Stadium, Strong Energy, and Regirock, I mean, you're going to be hitting unseen <laughs> amounts of damage. So uh, I think Regirock will be playable. Uh, we'll move on to Riolu and Lucario. This Lucario really isn't all that good. It's for a fighting and a double colorless. 
Uh, I'm seeing it a lot in the pre-release decks, so that might be your card to use for that. But other than that, I don't see it getting much play. This Halucha, we know there's one Halucha that's good, but this one doesn't live up to the hype of the other one. All right, we've got two Carbinks. I think they're both going to be good and both be usable in certain aspects. Um, I believe this one is the rare one. And this is actually a common card, which I'm quite surprised, but uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more in a moment. Energy Keeper. As long as this Pokemon is in play, your basic Pokemon basic energies can't be discarded by effects of your opponent's attacks, abilities, or trainers. So, uh, Crushing Hammers, sorry, you're not going to be able to take those off. Um, enhanced Hammers, well, oh, it's basic energy. So, Enhanced Hammers would still be able to take that off. Uh, but, um, what else are we talking about? Oh, Team Flare Grunts. Um, so yeah, this is going to be useful in just about any deck. You could play it just as maybe a one of, so that if you're playing against a hammer deck, uh, you could pretty much use that as a tech, especially if your energy is very important to your strategy. Uh, so anyway, I think that could be useful and see some play. Uh, this card bink, 90 HP, its ability is safeguard. Now, if you're new, you you don't know what safeguard is, but if you are uh, been around for a while, you'll know that safeguard prevents all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by Pokemon EXs. So this guy can't be hurt by Pokemon EXs unless there's a Hex Maniac or a Garbodor or something that shuts the ability off. His attack isn't all that great. Power Gym. Excuse me for fighting in a colorless. Does 40 damage. Um, strong energy and fighting stadium though could bump that to 60, 80. Regirox could bump it to easily 100 for two. So that's why they had to keep it kind of small. Because uh, this thing could potentially win you a game. Um, if that's all, if all they have is EXs and you just bench this, um, could potentially win a game. Of course with Hex Maniac in play, it's not as prevalent as it used to. Uh, but it can still be useful. Now, Carbink Break, I do think this is going to be playable, and I do think this is probably a card, if you like fighting, you should probably invest in. Um, this Pokemon has uh, an, another attack. It's just for one fighting energy. It only does 20 damage, but again, if it's strong energy, plus a muscle band, plus a fighting stadium, plus some Reggie Rocks, this 20 damage can turn into 40, 60, 80, a hundred for just one energy so don't discount just the fact that it, even though it only hits for 20 don't discount it but what it does is what's even better is it attaches two energy cards from your discard pile to one of your benched fighting Pokemon this is gonna go well with a Zygarde EX matter of fact we did build a deck my friend Daniel Ton uh, built this I would probably need to do some tweaks to that deck but as a just an overall prototype it was a very good uh, start for the build and it allows um, carving to help charge up Zygarde very fast and still put some damage on the field with uh, carving break so um, yeah I think that's a card that's gonna see some play all right, we got a couple versions of Zygarde. I think this is the Zygarde dog form. Um, it don't, it's only 90 HP, and I don't. I think this was only like an uncommon, so it's not that great. Aurora Break does 70 damage, and the Darkness or Fairy Pokemon that was damaged by this attack cannot attack during your opponent's next turn. So this could be useful if um, Dark and Fairy gain a big portion of the meta. Dark is already in the meta pretty well so it might be helpful uh, if fairy does gain more strength it could be useful so be on the lookout for that uh, Zygarde Rumble this is the 50 percent version I believe um, 30 damage your opponent's active Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn uh, again though with all the Fighting amplifiers that 30 could easily become more than that. Geo Strike does 120 damage, and then this attack does 10 damage to each of your benched Pokemon. 
but 120 plus the strong energy is 140, muscle bands 160, fighting stadiums 180, Reggie Rock, three of them on your bench is 210. So, you know, don't discount this. And at 120 HP for a basic, um, it's not too bad. And use carbine to help charge it up. Um, could potentially have a really, really good attacker right here with Zygarde. All right, and then we have Zygarde EX. I think this is the big boy that everybody's talking about. Uh, 190 HP, um, and he has three attacks. He also has a tool card, which we'll talk about when we get to the tools. Earth Pulse does 20 damage, and then this attack does 20 more damage if there's a stadium card in play. So Fighting Stadium uh, alone would make this uh, 20, 40, 60. Add a Strong Energy is 80. Add a Muscle Bands, um, 100 if you want to put the Muscle Band on. Some Reggie uh, Rocks. Let's say a couple Reggie Rocks, and you're hitting for easily 120 for just one energy. Um, to me, that seems kind of insane uh, that they did all that, made all that available for um, fighting types. Cell Storm does 60 damage, it's an extra colorless. And it's effectively, if there's a stadium in play, it's only going to do 20 more damage than the Earth Pulse. So um, we were talking about 120 with the first attack, 140 with the second attack, but then you heal 30 damage from this Pokemon. So it's a way for Zygarde to actually um, heal himself and still put massive damage on the board. And then Ground Force does 100 damage, so it would effectively do 40 more damage than Cell Storm. Uh, so if we were hitting like 140 with Cell Storm, we could hit 180 with Ground Force. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then, like I said, we will also talk about Zygarde's um, special tool card that you can add, attach. I don't think Zygarde got a full art, though, uh, which is kind of disappointing because I know a lot of people are excited about Zygarde. All right, let's look at some dark Pokemons. We're looking at Umbreon EX. Uh, Night Veil does 20 damage. Discard any number of cards from your hand and then draw an equal number of cards from your deck. Uh, could be useful. in game. 70 damage, but if this knocks out an active mo mega Pokemon, take an additional two prize cards. So you could literally um, take four prize cards on one turn if you could somehow set this up to take out a mega. Now, there's not a lot of megas that are weak to darkness that are even used anyway. Mega, uh, mega Gengar, but even then it wouldn't one-shot him. So you're going to have to set this up if you're going to use Umbreon. However, it is intriguing that you could be able to use that to just finish the game off in the right circumstances, uh, especially with Max Elixir and DCE. Uh, you could not even bench it until you knew that it, the setup was ready. Then Max Elixir, hopefully getting that dark energy, attach a double colorless retreat, and take the KO. So it um, could be useful. And it could be, especially since Dark struggles against... Uh, Mega Manetric, specifically Evil Tall. Uh, this could be help even up the Mega Manetric, um, you know, strategy uh, attack. The matchup between Mega Manetric. Here's the Tyranitar. I don't want to spend a lot of time because I don't think it's going to be all that good. It is a massive 160 HP. Roar of Anger. You may use this ability when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon. So when you play this down. Attach as many dark energies from your discard pile to this Pokemon as prize cards your opponent has taken. So if your opponent has taken four prize cards, when you put this down, you can search your deck for four dark energies and put it on this Tyranitar. And you'll need it because his attack requires five dark energies. Dark Mountain does 150 damage and then discard the top two cards of your deck. This attack does 50 more damage for each supporter card discarded in this way. I guess if you could use Premonition or Reserve Ticket, um, that could help you because then you could um, do, an, do 200, potentially 250 damage. The only problem is um, I don't really want to be discarding supporters, do you? Uh, I mean, in the early game it might be okay because we could VS Seacrum. But the late game, which is when you're going to be able to use him because of so much energy required, um, the supporters that are in the deck 
are probably still pretty useful to you. So I don't know if Tyranitar is going to be anything. I'm pretty certain it's not. Volibee and Mandibuzz. I also believe Mandibuzz is going to get a break from a box set. Um, his first attack is pretty interesting and it also, since it's a colorless, allows you to use this in just about any deck. Bone Drop. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon that has an ability. This attack does 60 damage to that Pokemon. So you could snipe Shamans um, on the bench. Um, two of those could take out a Shaman uh, for just one energy. So it's decent, but it is a stage one. So I'm not sure how useful that is. Uh, Wormadam has been in several, is in like a fighting type and a grass type and a metal type, but we're not going to really talk about that much here today. All right, the next one we're going to look at is uh, Bronzong Break. Um, so I'm not sure how I feel about this card. Um, obviously, Bronzors, nothing special, it's just the basic. Um, Right now we have the Bronzong that's from Phantom Forces that allows the Metal Link, so it allows you to uh, get Metal Energy out of the discard pile and attach it to one of your bench Pokemon. Uh, but this Bronzong is quite a bit different. Um, it has Steel Fortification. As long as this Pokemon is in play, prevent all damage done to your bench Pokemon by your opponent's uh, Pokemon's attacks. Um, and it's not just bench, it's actually all effects also um, to your bench Pokemon. So this is actually going to be a Trevenant uh, counter also. Uh, we talked about the Rotom earlier, but this is actually going to be um, probably even a better one. Um, I could see that someone even playing a 1-1 one -one line of this just in case they play uh, against Trevenant. Um, because then now if they Silent Fear, none of the uh, damage to the none of the bench will receive any damage from the silent fear or from tree slam uh, so this bronze zone could be useful also as attack from metal and double colorless guard press 60 damage and during your opponent's next turn damage done to this pokemon by attacks is reduced by 20 i guess this could be like you could try to use shield energy on here uh, to really reduce his uh reduce the damage that he takes and then you can't they can't hurt the bench either so uh that's a possibility and then we got bronzong break so this is would be like a stage two in essence so it's a stage one that has a break um it increases the hp by 30 so it's now 130 which is you know decent um I don't know how I feel about this attack though. Gold Rain is what it's called. Discard as many metal energies attached to this Pokemon as you like. And then choose a number of your opponent's Pokemon equal to the number of energy you discarded. You may choose the same Pokemon multiple times. And this attack does 30 damage to each of those Pokemon for each time you chose. So if you had, for instance, three metal energies on here, you could choose you'd be able to do 90 damage you could do it all to one or you could split it up to 30 30 30 on three different ones or 160 and 130 if you had five metal energies you could discard all five of them and then it would do 150 and then it would do you could choose i don't know could basically you could do a lot of bench damage so it causes bronze on break to become a a, a bench a spread deck the only problem is, is it seems like Trevenant Break does that a little bit better. And with the hard counters in here, it seems like if you were playing Bronzong versus Bronzong, they would just end up countering each other. So I'm not sure how useful that's going to be. I don't know if it'll see play. I think the Bronzong might see play, but I don't know if the Break will. Um, Lucario, this is a very interesting... Um, uh, Lucario, it is a metal type, 110 HP. Um, the second attack, Fight Alone, does 30 damage for a metal and a colorless. If you have less Pokemon in play than your opponent, this attack does 60 more damage times the difference in the number of Pokemon you and your opponent have. So, if you have, say, two Pokemon in play and they have six, um, it would actually do 
uh, 60 times the difference, which would be 6 minus 2 would be 4. So it would do 240 damage um, plus the original 30. So it would be do 270 damage. So this guy could be like a finisher. You know, you could kind of just keep him on the bench until the end of the game. And then when he's the only last one left, um, he could really do some massive damage. Assuming that your opponent has quite a few bench Pokemon. Uh, Genesect EX. I don't know if I really like this. Um, I just think the other Genesect from Black and White, the Plasma Genesect, was so much better. Uh, 180 HP Metal Type. Does have the ability Cassette Change. Once during your turn before you attack, you may return a Pokemon tool attached to this Pokemon to your hand. So I guess after you attack with Rapid Blaster, uh, you could take whatever tools on there, whether it's a Fighting Fury Belt or a Muscle Band, replace it, put it back in your hand, and then put a Float Stone on it, especially since the Rapid Blaster attack requires you to discard as many Metal Energies as you want. So, um, you know, you might need to reload for later on, so you could just put a... Um, float stone on it. I don't know. Um, three metal energies does a hundred damage, and then you may discard as many as you want to do an extra twenty damage. So if you had three metal energies and you discarded them all, it would do one sixty. Four metal energies and discard them all does one ninety. No, one eighty. I'm sorry. Five metal energies and discard them all. It does two hundred. So um, I don't know if I see it'll see much play. Um, Wigglytuff is the only thing that's cool is it does all use just colorless energy, so you could fit this in, uh, I guess, to maybe help against uh, dragons. But Double Slap is going to do 60 damage, and then this you flip a coin, it does 60 times the number two coins, and then it does 60 times the number of heads. So you could potentially hit 120, or you may just bomb and get zero. Um, so I don't know, and it's three colorless energy, so I just don't know if that's all really worth it. I'll collect them just because I like the fairies, and I like to have one of everything. Mr. Mime, nothing really special. Snubble, nothing special. Mega Altaria, let's actually visit, we'll go down to the colorless real quick and visit um, Altaria EX, and then we'll come back up to this. Um, there's also a Cottony and a Whimsicott, but none of those are really anything worth looking at um, yes yeah, so let's go look down at Altaria EX real quick it's just a couple more down and then we'll come back up to Mega Altaria um, I do see that this Mega Altaria I think this is gonna Altaria EX and Mega Altaria EX are gonna go probably pretty cheap because most people like Alakazam and Zygarde a little bit better and so I think these might be sleeper cards. Um, Altaria EX, the one good, one interesting thing about this is you're going from a colorless type to a fairy typing. And their weaknesses are different. So Altaria EX, is, since it's a flying type that's colorless, would be weak to lightning, resistant to fighting. But as soon as it goes to Mega Altaria, um, then it, it goes to... Um, it goes to fairy typing, so then it's weak to metal and resistant to dark. So you might be able to use that to your advantage uh, if you were to play an Altaria Mega Altaria deck. Looking at Altaria EX, it's 170 HP. Powerful gain uh, for a double colorless does 30 damage. And if this Pokemon recovers any HP during this turn, this attack does 60 more damage and remove three counters from this Pokemon. So, um, I don't know if you use like a potion, or if you use uh, Floral Breeze from Floor Just Break, or if you use Gardevoir's, uh, the baby Gardevoir's uh, healing ability, you could use, um, you could do, this double colorless now turns from 30 to actually 90 HP, uh, 90 attack, and then you'd also heal 30 more damage counters off of here. So, I don't know, it could be useful if you could find a way to heal it. We'll talk about Fairy Drop. 
uh, in a moment, which might be something that could be used. And then Shining Wind is very similar to Gardevoir EX's attack. Uh, Gardevoir EX's, though, is, I think, three fairy energies. So Shining Wind is, uh, and it does 100 damage, and then the Pokemon has no weakness during your opponent's next turn. With this Shining Wind, um, it's three colorless, so it doesn't do 100, it only does 80, but then you you lose the lightning weakness for the turn, which, you know, could be useful. All right, so with that, let's bump back up to Mega Altaria and look at its attack. All right, Mega Altaria has Miss Purge for one fairy and a double colorless, does 100 damage. If this Pokemon has any special energy attached to it, this attack does 30 more damage, and then you heal 30 damage from each of your Pokemon. This, in a way, could be another hard counter to Trevenant Break, and I think um, if Trevenant continues to see um, the playing that it is, um, I, you could see like Bronzong and Mega Altaria see some play here. Uh, 100 damage means you're going to be doing just two hit KOs mostly, but with 30 damage, uh, with actually 130 damage, and then you heal 30 from this Pokemon and all your others, um, that could be very useful, especially if you could use Fairy Garden to just keep moving them around, healing each other over and over and over again. Uh, so 130 isn't a whole lot, but two hit KOing and then being able to heal over and over. A uh, fairy drop we'll talk about also could be used to heal also. And I could even see where we could use Florges EX and Florges Break. I'm mean, not Florges EX, Florges and Florges Break to do more healing and also to remove this fairy energy requirement, meaning that you would only need a double colorless on Mega Altaria to hit that 130 damage mark. So um, there's a. I haven't thought about how I build this yet. But I definitely will try to build it um, and see if we can make it playable. All right, we let's look at Diancie EX real quick. Uh, ability Twinkle Veil. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, any damage done to your Pokemon by attacks is reduced by 30 damage. So um, this could be useful. Uh, again, I, I guess Trevenant is the only major spread damage deck right now. I guess you could say Nori Vern is a spread damage deck. Um, this could potentially help with that. Um, I just don't know if I see see much play for this, at least right now. But in the future, we could see the Diancie EX being used. The one bad thing is, is some of the fairy Pokemon have a lot lower HP. Uh, one thing I didn't mention about the Mega Altaria is that it is the highest HP fairy type yet so it has 220 hp mega guard of war was the highest before that with 210 but uh, mega altaria is now the new highest so um that would make it pretty hard to knock out in one one hit All right and then the attack here is miracle stage it does 60 damage there's a stadium in play. This attack does 50 more damage. So you could do 110 damage for a fairy and a double colorless. Again, if you could somehow team up Florges with this, 110 for just a double colorless is not actually too bad, to be honest with you. All right, dragons don't get a whole lot, but the, what they do get is a nice little EX and Kendra EX. I do think this could see play, especially with Magnazone, the one that allows you to attach as many lightning energy as you want. It's kind of like the old Blastoise where you could put as much water energy as you want. This will allow you to put as much, uh, the Magnazone allows you to put as much lightning on. And so Kendra EX has an attack. Heavy Storm does 20 damage. And then you discard a stadium in play. Uh, for a water and three colorless, Dragon Tail does 60 damage, and this attack does 30 more damage for each basic, now it's key, basic lightning energy attached to this Pokemon. So you can't really use um, Dragon Energy here, Double Dragon. Uh, you could for the water requirement and one of the colorless, but as far as the attack's damage is only going to get uh, higher if there's basic lightning. 
But if you think about it, 60, if you had uh, two more on there, two lightning, it would be 60 plus 60 is 120. Three more would be 150. Four more lightnings. So if you had a double colorless and four lightnings on here, um, you do 180, which is kind of the mark you'd want to hit to start taking the one hit KOs. Um, so anyway, I think this is a could be a playable card. I don't know how playable. But um, if you get the Magna Zone out, matter of fact, it could just be one of those cards that you can kind of slip into Magna Zone. Um, and, you know, just give you a different typing that's very weak instead of weak to like fighting like most lightning types are. So I think that's a possibility in a lightning deck. Um, Meowth, Kangaskhan, none of this is really all that good. Kangaskhan's got a Mega Punch for 100 damage, but it requires four energies. Okay, Aerodactyl. So here's another one of our uh, restored Pokemon that we need. Put this card on your bitch. Only with the effects of Old Amber. Now, Aerodactyl, though, is just a basic, or I should say a restored, but you're never going to have to evolve him. He's 120 HP. So it's really, really good. Uh, and he's a colorless type. And for one energy, he does 30. But then the second energy, Jet Draft, for just a double colorless, does a whopping 120 damage. And then discard a special energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Wow. This could be useful against Toad and Giratina. Um, I don't know, it's just a pretty strong card, uh, and I, I think it will see some play uh, if you can get it out, you know, out in the act, out through Old Amber or using a Fossil Researcher or something like that. All right, Snorlax, um, nothing really special here, but I do want to talk about Lugia and Lugia Break, both very important, because uh, I do think this is going to see play also. Lugia Break is a stage, you know, a basic break so he's like kind of a stage one kind of like carbink is um but carbink really isn't much of an attacker as he's more of a support guy lugia though i can see is being an attacker so lugia is 120 hp when this pokemon is your active pokemon damage done to this pokemon by your opponent's pokemon's attack is reduced by 20. so it's like he's got a built-in hard, hard charm on rising burn um I, 60 damage and if this opponent's if your opponent's active pokemon is a pokemon ex this attack does 60 more so for three colorless you can do 120 to an ex lugia break on the other hand um jump bumps this hp up by a 30 more so now it's 150 hp and it has for four colorless destructive wave does 150 damage and then discard two energies attached to this Pokemon. And if you remember, Lugia EX also for four colorless energy does 150 damage and then you discard this as long as there's a stadium in play, and then you discard it. This one you're going to discard two energies attached to this Pokemon. However, with a Muscle Band, this is going to hit 170, which is the magic number. Um, so that's why I think this could be C play. I mean, double colorless, you just need two attachments. Um, and even if you don't, you could still use this in decks that use uh, energy acceleration. Uh, Fairy energy with Xerneas, Bronzong can still be used to, to bring metal energy onto this thing. Uh, so there, there's a lot of possibilities still here with the Lugia break that you may want to consider um, here. All right, Wismer, Loudred, and Exploud, nothing really important to there. We've already looked at Altaria. We'll look at Audino EX and Mega Audino. Um, I kind of was hoping this would have been uh, something a little better, but it, it's not. The one good thing about Audino EX, though, is uh, and Mega Audino is you could fit them into any kind of deck. Um, I don't know how well they'll work, but... I know King is Kong and Mega King is Kong did work um, some in some decks. So Drain Slab does 20 damage and then heal 20 damage from this Pokemon. 
for one colorless. Do the wave for three colorless, does 60 damage, and then this attack does 10 more damage for each of your opponent, each of your benched Pokemon. So if you had um, five, it would do 110. If you had eight from a Skyfield, it would do 140. Um, it's decent. It is 180 HP and it is weak to fighting, so it is a different typing. Uh, weak typing, I should say. Uh, Mega Onno has Magical Symphony, let's see, 220, and uh, it does 110 damage, but if you played a supporter from your hand this turn, this attack does 50 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So uh, it is kind of a sniper, but, you know, the thing I'm thinking here is, like, if you look at, now granted, it's only three colorless. But if you look at something like Ho OEX, it does 130 plus 30 to the bench. Uh, this one does 110 plus 50 to the bench. Um, I don't know. It, it could work, I guess. It just seems like the numbers don't quite work out. If you had a. F Maybe if you had. Well, if you had a fighting. Well, you can't use Fighting Fury Belt or Muscle Band. That's the big thing, is you could do that with Ho Oh, but you can't do that with Mega Autono. So I don't know. The math doesn't just doesn't seem like it works very well here to take like a four prize knockout or something like that. Anyway, Mincino and Chinchino, nothing real important there. All right, we're getting into some of the trainer cards now. So we got the Alakazam Spirit Link, the Altaria Spirit Link, and the Audino Spirit Link. Um, we'll look at some of these. Bent Spoon. Um, Prevent all effects of attacks except damage done to this to the Pokemon this card is attached to. Effects already on this Pokemon are not removed. So this could stop, you know, poison in an attack or paralysis in an attack. Uh, it stops pretty much all the effects except for any damage that's done. So um, I don't know if it, how well it'll be used. It seems like Bent Spoon is something that Alakazam would do, so maybe it's meant to go on Alakazam, but then you gotta have a Spirit Link. So, I don't know. Um, Chaos Tower is the only stadium in this set, I believe. The red side, uh, this player's Pokemon's cannot, Pokemon cannot be asleep or paralyzed, which I think could be very useful in some cases. If they are asleep or paralyzed, remove those status conditions. That's cool. Blue side. Uh, this Pokemon player's Pokemon cannot be poisoned or confused. So, I don't know. You might see this in a Hypno deck, or um, you could see someone use this with Ariados on their side and make sure that the poison, they can't be poisoned, and then they could use Ariados um, to you know, help them out there, do a little bit of extra damage. Devolution Spray, this is a reprint, but it allows you to devolve one of your evolved Pokemon and put the highest stage evolution card into your hand. This is meant for Mega uh, uh, Alakazam. You can devolve him and then put him onto something else and continue to do those damage counters, because remember when you evolve from uh, Alakazam to Mega Alakazam, you do two damage counters to active and three to one of the bench. So this is what the Alakazam deck is. One of the things the Alakazam deck should be using. All right, Dome Fossil Kabuto. This is the foss fossils I was telling you about. Look at the bottom seven cards of your deck, and you may reveal a Kabuto you find there and put it onto your bench. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. This is where that shuckle that I was telling you about at the beginning of the game could be useful. You could, if you had a, a Kabuto in your hand, you could use shuckle to put it on the bottom of the deck. And then you could use this to grab it and put it onto your bench. Same thing with um, some of the other ones we'll look at in just a moment. Energy Pouch. Uh, this is a tool card that you attach. If the Pokemon this tool card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, return all the basic energy attached to that Pokemon from your discard pile to your hand. Um, I'm not sure what I see that being useful in yet. It's got to be all basic energy. So, 
most of the time you're going to want to put a muscle band or something else on there um, and if you're not you're going to probably put like an assault vest or um, if it's a basic of fighting fury belt so I don't know why unless you're playing something with just a real high energy count maybe that uh, Kendra EX that we saw that could be a potential where if that Kendra gets knocked out you get all the energies all those lightning energies back into your hand and then you can reattach them with Magnezone so that seems like the most likely candidate for that uh, tool card uh, energy reset uh, I haven't really stopped to think about how this could help you uh, return any number of energy cards attached to your Pokemon and play to your hand uh, again, I guess it would be Magnazone is the only thing that can really attach multiple energies right now that I can think of. So it seems like maybe again in a lightning deck that that would be useful. Uh, here's Fairy Drop. This is the card I was telling you about. This is um, remove 50 damage or 5 damage counters from one of your Pokemon that has a Fairy Energy attached to it. Now this is kind of cool because Max Potion ideally would be... Uh, better because um, you're going to heal everything off. But I have a feeling that Aromatisse is going to um, move on from the rotation. And then we're going to be stuck with Fairy Drop. And so this will still allow us to heal 50 damage to one of our Fairy, uh, one of our Pokemon with Fairy Energy on it uh, without having to lose any energy from, say, like a um, Max Potion or a Super Potion. So I think this could see play. Uh, I'm just not sure how yet. I mean, the Mega Altaria seems like the the one that we would use it on. Fairy Garden did get a reprint, which is good. So that means anything with Fairy Energy on it has free retreat. Uh, Fossil Excavation Kit. This is a trainer card, uh, which then allows you to grab two of either the old Amber Aerodactyl, Helix Fossil Ammonite, or Dome Fossil Kabuto. Um, so this allows you to grab like these, the Helix Fossil Ammonite. And this again is one of those fossil cards to help you get Ammonite out. Look at the bottom seven cards of your deck and it, you may reveal an Ammonite you find there and put it onto your bench. So that's just like the Kabutops Dome Fossil. Uh, we have a, a supporter that at first I didn't think it was going to be very good. But I do potentially think this could be maybe a one of in your deck. It could be a decent draw supporter. Draw cards equal to the number of your opponent's benched basic Pokemon. Now, we used to have Colrus where you would shuffle your hand into your deck and then draw a, the number equal to both you and your opponent's uh, benched Pokemon. So you could potentially do 10 if there was a Skyfield in play. You could potentially draw. Um, 16. Uh, with Lass's recommendation, most people have a pretty full bench. So you could see uh, five, you could grab five extra cards with this card, potentially. Uh, if you've already got a hand of like five or six, though, and you don't want to sick them more because you don't want to get rid of all that, Lass's recommendation would allow you to draw an extra five cards. And if you've got like a hand of 10, 11, or 12, uh, certainly you're going to be able to use some combos to to use the cards exactly how you need them. Um, and then it, think about this, if they're having a Skyfield and play like a Mega Ray deck or a Raichu Bats deck, you're going to be able to draw eight cards potentially from your opponent uh, just because they've got the Skyfield in play. So I do think Lass's recommendation, we need to not discount it because I think it could be useful. Maybe just a one of in your deck though. Um, Mega Catcher. This is like Pokemon Catcher, except there is no flip. However, this is only to grab Mega Evolution Pokemon uh, from your opponent's bench. So it's kind of like a Lysander, except it's not a supporter, but you can only use it to bring Mega Pokemon to the active position. However, this could be good against Mega Manetric, especially since it has free retreat. Mega Manetric is always kind of like after it's taken damage, it'll retreat into a different one so that you they can rough seas over and over and over and they can just keep healing um, and keep kind of rotating between other Mega Manetrics. This is going to make it so that you can possibly knock out that Mega Manetric on the bench without needing a Lysander. The only problem is, is 
you when you won't when will you know to need to put this in your deck it seems like it's going to be just situational only and since we don't play um like a side deck in pokemon it just doesn't seem like one of those cards that would be useful unless you knew who you were playing against before you started playing uh, N gets a reprint, guys. Uh, this will probably replace Shauna and Birch. I don't think anybody will be playing those anymore now that N is reprinted. It is probably the second best draw card after um, Juniper slash Sycamore. Old Amber Aerodactyl. That's how you get Aerodactyl into play. Pokemon Fan Club has been reprinted. Search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon and reveal them and put them into your hand. Power Memory. This is the one I was telling you about. This is you can only attach this to Z you can attach it to anybody, but when it's on Zygarde EX, it gives Zygarde EX a fourth attack, and it requires two fighting and a colorless, and it's called All Cells Burn. It does 200 damage, but then you have to discard three energy attached to this Pokemon. So you're going to take out pretty much anything because if one of those energies is, say, a strong energy, um, you're going to be hitting for 220 right there. And if you have Regirox on the bench, you could be hitting for 230, 240. So uh, this card is going to be useful, and Zygarde decks will probably, I mean, it would seem silly not to run it in a Zygarde deck. And with Carbink being able to fill you up quickly, um, it seems like you could just um, use All Cells Burn and just knock through mega Pokemon pretty easily. Random Receiver, I like this reprint. Um, basically it reveals cards from the top of your deck until you reveal a supporter card and then put it into your hand. It's going to guarantee that you'll grab a supporter card. It might not be the supporter card you want, but you will get a supporter card in your hand uh, if you whenever you use this. Scorch Earth gets a reprint. So does Shauna. Rest in peace. She's pretty much done for though. Team Rocket's handiwork. This is the one I was telling you about that is going to help mill decks. I think Waylord will take advantage of this and also possibly that coughing deck that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's just like the coughing attack. Flip two coins for each head. Discard two cards from the top of your opponent's deck. Um, you might even see this. I could see this in Expanded with Sableye Garboder. Um, if there's no need to play a supporter for the turn, uh, like a Sycamore, a lot of times Sableye Garboder decks get so far ahead that they don't really need to use the supporter for the turn. And so this is one of those supporters they could have in hand and keep reusing over and over and over with puzzles of time um, to, to really begin to um, mill your opponent's deck. So I could see this in Waylord, I could see it in Sableye, Garboder. Um, matter of fact, I may even build Sableye Garboder with this in the deck. Ultra Ball gets a reprint, which is probably about time. Double Colorless gets a reprint, and Strong Energy gets a reprint. I think that's probably one of the most important things. I was kind of hoping to see Strong Energy rotate because I feel like fighting types have so much damage enhancement already that it's just too strong. Um, and with strong energy being re brought in, um, it's just gonna. I mean, seriously, I mean, when you're hitting for like a hundred for one energy, it just seems a little OP to me. But uh, they reprinted it nonetheless. So we're gonna have to deal with that. Uh, here's the full arts. I'll kind of go through them quickly Glaceon EX, Alakazam EX, uh, Mega Alakazam. Umbreon, some of these look really good. Genesect EX, Mega Altaria EX, there's the Kindra EX, Altaria EX, there is Team Rocket's Handiwork, which is the new supporter that I was just telling you about that you can mill with. So I think it looks pretty cool. I'd like to have one of those. And then Alakazam gets a secret rare. And so, guys, that is everything. That is the. Um, Fates Collide set review for you. Uh, please uh, give me a thumbs up on this video and feel free to put in the comments below um, any questions that you have or any, uh, what's your, tell me exactly what your favorite card from this set is. Um, and then uh, if you're new to this 
channel, please hit subscribe. Anyway, guys, this is Pokedad signing off. We'll talk to you later.